I feel like everyone has embossing folders. It might even be one of the first things you ever bought as a card maker. But for me, they always end up at the back of a drawer somewhere discarded. I kind of figure it's because rolling through an embossing folder, although it's amazing the first few times, it doesn't exactly scream, I'm releasing my creativity right now. So today I'm gonna to show you some amazing techniques that are gonna take your embossing folders from, wow, that's nice, to, oh my God, that's amazing. And that will get you creating with your embossing folders in a whole new way. And just a heads up for all of those Justine Hovey VIP members, you're gonna be getting an additional three techniques over on the member page. So be sure to check that out. So for the first technique, I know you're probably already rolling your eyes and thinking, I've seen this done before. Adding ink to your embossing folder is nothing new, but I want to show this very briefly before we go on to the next technique, because we're going to be going into a lot more detail. So I'm adding my sponge here, my blending tool, and I am adding some of this oxide ink onto embossing folders. I like using the embossing ink or the oxide ink rather because it stays wet a little bit longer and I decided to challenge myself a little bit too to not use white cardstock because if you're using oxide ink that pigment ink is actually going to work on darker cardstock. If you're using a Gemini Junior like myself your sandwich is going to be the cutting plate, the magnetic sheet and then your folder and the plastic sheet on top and then when you pull it out you get this super cool debossed look that gets into those nooks and crannies and looks super distressed and vintage and I absolutely love it when it's cut down. Okay, moving on to a little bit more detail. Same thing, using some Distress Oxide, but this time I'm gonna be using a blending brush that's a bit smaller. I'm using the detailed blending brushes from Altenew, but any sort of small brushes, like those ones that come in the Picket Fence um, set, or you, maybe you have makeup brushes, and probably a dry paintbrush would do the trick too you're gonna go in and start adding all the little details to the embossing folder. So I'm using a floral one here, and I'm gonna be using a dark and a light color for plenty of the shades that I'm gonna be doing so that I can add a lot more detail in here. So I'm going in with the shabby shutters, and then I went along with some Moe's Lawn and just added some areas that I figured would be a little bit darker because they're maybe sitting behind a, shower, a flower or behind some petals. Adding some yellow to the inner part of the flower and then going in with some of the areas here for the petals. And you'll see that it kind of looks like a hot mess right now. But when I spritz it with a little bit of cart water and run it through my die cutting machine, it ends up looking like a bit of a watercolor masterpiece. I love how the colors flow together. It looks beautiful in that debossed look. And it's just a way to get more out of your embossing folders. But let's go into another way that you can do something similar to this. I'm gonna be adding some embossing ink onto the raised areas of a piece of navy cardstock that I've embossed with a texture, 3D textured folder, however you wanna call them. I don't know, I find regular embossing folders now that the 3D ones have come out kind of boring. And so I really love using these 3D ones. I'm going to be adding some perfect pearls, which I know a lot of you are gonna have in the back of a drawer somewhere. And I'm going to be adding them dry with a dry paintbrush onto the background. And I'm going to try and get the color sort of accurate too. So the green is leaves and the yellow for the inner parts of the flower and then going in with the petals. And what I love about this is you don't have to be very careful. If anything gets on the cardstock, it won't worry about it because it's not attaching itself to the embossing ink. And just a heads up as we're crafting here, if you enjoy learning new techniques like these, the registration for the Eat Sleep Crafty Retreat is now open. Myself and four other amazing instructors are gonna be spilling all the technique secrets over an entire weekend of fun and crafting. The link for that is below in the video description. So after this is all done and you have all of your areas covered in the powder, which really shouldn't take too long, you're just going to grab a large brush and just swipe across it. That will get rid of anything that is not attached to the ink that you laid down earlier. So if it's on your background, no big deal. And then you're just going to wave it through some water. So spritz into the air and just kind of wave your cardstock through it. And that is going to set your powder. And I think this looks absolutely stunning with the metallic look. So I ran it through with one of these sentiment dyes hugs. And then I love, love, love when you hold this up to the light, the metallic sheen you get from it. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, since we're already working with Perfect Pearls, if you want to learn more techniques on how to use your Perfect Pearls, meet me over here in this video because I'm going to be going over 10 amazing techniques to use 
with your perfect pearls to make sure that you're getting your money's worth out of those amazing little powders. See you over there.